Greetings everybody. Today a bit of a different video. I go with Russell and we explore different sites in the Nyesk, World War II sites. Mainly the concentration camp and a mass grave, the second biggest mass grave during World War II apart from Babi Yar in this part of the world. So a bit somber, but it shows you why Donetsk is what it is and why they're so adamant to fight fascism because of the history here. So anyway, before we start, you know, the ritual, please like, subscribe. If you can afford it, make a donation. If you can't, really the biggest donation is to share this video around, to share the information around, to share the eyewitness truth around. And, all, and also, something that I didn't know, and probably most people don't know, is Donetsk was created by a Welshman. Yes, not joking. Anyway, uh, let's get into it, uh, and I hope you enjoy. Started coal mines and a steel plant. What was his name again? John Hughes. A Welshman? Uh, yeah, he was from Cardiff, Wales. Okay, how and did he, he get uh, here? How did he get here? And he... Well, I don't know exactly, but he came here and then he sent out advertisements all over the world saying if you want uh, a good job, good pay, fair pay, come to... And, and work the mines. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and he, was, he was a good boss. He paid his workers fairly and people came from all over the world. I mean, from, you know, like a hundred different countries, you know, which is where Donetsk got its, uh, you know, international roots from. Okay. And at the DMZ steel plant, every hour they, they blow, the horn. blow this uh, foghorn that was on the ship that John Hughes came across. Um, came to the Black Sea, I guess. And uh, it's the original foghorn from more than 150 years ago. That's interesting. I bet you that's somebody that most people would never know. This well, city, I have a friend. That this city was founded by Welshmen. <clears throat> I have a good friend. He's been a longtime supporter. Uh, and he lives in Cardiff, Wales. And his last name is Hughes. And he's probably like a descendant of John Hughes. So where are we now, Russell? What's this? Well, what this, uh, this park is the, uh, it's a park for the remembrance of the victims of fascism. And when the German Nazis occupied this city, which in the Second World War, War it was called uh, Stalino. And they occupied the city for 700 days. And right here on this spot, these buildings back here, they were the, uh, like the German military headquarters. Okay. And this right here, it was a concentration camp. Right here, where, yeah, where yeah. we're walking. And, and it wasn't even really a concentration camp because what it was, was just a big field, open field with barbed wire fences, guard towers, guards, guard dogs, and they just threw people in here. Uh, they, there was no shelter. They didn't feed them. They didn't even give them water. They just left them here until they died or until they did whatever they wanted to with them. And uh, the place, okay, so this was the place where the concentration camp was. We built a big church down there in memory of them, this monument right here is uh, in memory of the victims of fascism. You think the... I think someone will learn, what, don't you? Yeah, you do, but... I mean... And you know, it's really... You know, it pisses me off to see the grass growing so tall here and, you know, the garbage cans overflowing. You think the... administration... somebody would treat it with a little more respect. 
since we're still fighting fascists today. But, uh, so this was the concentration camp over there. It was the Nazi headquarters. And... Do you have any idea how many people were there and its height of its... Uh... Um, in the thousands, in the thousands. Okay. And they just leave them here till they die. And you can see right Ooh. here, Like, this is like disgraceful that, the, that this is, park is in such a thing. But right there it says, in memory of the victims of fascism. And there's supposed to be a, an eternal flame at the top of these stairs, which according to the way they're taking care of the park, I'm pretty sure it won't be on. It's a good view of Danes from here. Pretty good. Which one is this church? It's the one that they built in memory of the people that were killed here, that were murdered here. You can see on this one thing closest to us, the window. Yeah. It's been hit too. So churches are fair targets also. Uh, on Easter night they hit three or four of them, including the main cathedral. Here during the occupation of Stalino, which is what Donetsk was called back then from 41 to 43. Concentration camp, fascists. Brought the prisoners here. You see here at the bottom it says, Nobody forgets, nobody forgives. So here we are in another interesting story, and this story probably even most people in Don in Donetsk don't even know. Yeah. Um. So right here where these red bricks are is the entrance way to where it used to be the 4-4 mine back during the German occupation of uh, Stalino, which was what Donetsk was called during 1941-43. Uh, there was a mine shaft there, it was 360 meters deep. So it was uh, about 1,200 feet deep. It was 15 feet across, 10 feet wide, 15 feet wide, and uh, more than 1,000 feet deep, straight down. And uh, this was the place where the German Nazis disposed of the bodies of the people they murdered. It's the, uh, in, in, in Stalino, in Donetsk, during the 700 days that they occupied this city, less than two years, they murdered well over 75,000 people uh, and buried 75,000 bodies in this place, in this 4-4 mine. It was 360 meters deep at the beginning of the occupation. It was 60 meters deep when it was liberated by the Red Army. It was completely filled with human bodies, men, women, children, and uh, something that's, that I always thought was strange was right here where this building had just gotten demolished. It was the British Petroleum Office in Donetsk. And this is a little bit kind of outside the center. It was an old building, um, not very fancy. And British Petroleum being a, uh, you know, a multi, multi-billion dollar corporation, you know, they could have built a skyscraper or had offices in the best building in Donetsk and instead they just had this little building here. And it makes you wonder, you know, you hear these stories about uh, 
you know, the British royalty and aristocracy being Satanists and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not saying I have an opinion either way, but just the fact that they chose to have their office in Donetsk right next to the biggest mass, this is the second biggest mass grave in Ukraine after uh, Babi Yar outside of Kiev. So, I mean, this is a, you know, a place where unimaginable evil was committed. They, they threw whole families down down this hole. At, you know, men, you know, the parents, the children. And I never could understand, I never could figure out if you throw the children down first in front of the parents or the parents down first in front of the children. I don't, I have, I can't conceive of something like it's, that. I think it's, it's horror either way. Yeah, but you know, the point being that it's it always struck me as strange and perhaps significant that this is where the British Petroleum Corporation, worldwide billion dollar corporation, chose to have their offices. And I'll show you just how close it is. I mean, it's basically right on the same ground. The memorial of the 404 mine, Requiem, remember. On this place, during the uh, German fascists from 1941 to 43 killed more than 75,000 uh, peaceful civilians, children, men, women, prisoners. No wonder the Donetsk people will fight uh, fascism to the end. Of course. <clears throat> so more than a hundred people <coughs> every single day both alive and dead, were brought here to be thrown down these mine shafts. It's interesting, here's a story about it, it's in Russian, but uh, you can see there's two kind of interesting stories. There was, there was a building that surrounded the actual shaft and the guards would take people in and just throw them down the shaft. And two interesting stories, there was one guy and the guard took him in to throw him down the shaft and he grabbed a hold of the guard and took him with him. And it was so deep that you can't come back up. No, 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 I mean, you, you die when you hit the ground, of course. Yeah. But uh, there was one guy who somehow managed to grab a hold to something along the side of the shaft and he didn't fall all the way down. And he waited till nighttime and he crawled out and he got away. And he joined the partisans and then the Red Army. And he went uh, all the way, all the way to Berlin. You can only imagine what 300 meters deep is. So the only difference is that Babi R happened over one or two days and yeah, this happened, happened over, over two, years, less two, than years. two years. And I just like to remind everybody that this ideology, the Bandera ideology is what was responsible for this, for Babi R and for a lot of what's happening in Ukraine today. Yeah.
these are a few of the names of some of the people that were positively identified as being killed or thrown in here. And uh, I mean, most of them, you know, they were thrown down. Uh, then uh, there would be uh, we would pour lime on top of the bodies, you know, to keep it from you know keep down the smell, and it would just disintegrate the body. So. You know, tens of thousands of people were never even identified. But you look here on this uh, top one to the left. And you can see like uh, agroponic. Mother, father, four children. Mm. All thrown in. You know, uh, Abramson, agroponic. A lot of Jewish names. Yeah, Abramson yeah. is a very Jewish name. So for the crime of being Jewish, they were thrown to their deaths here. And I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like an insignificant, quiet little place you wouldn't Really, I never heard of it before you said the Nazis of the 21st century. I mean, this is all what this current war is about. It's exactly. like it's a continuation of what happened here in the, the nine in the 1940s. There's no other, there's no other way to describe it. This the is philosophy of masters and slaves. It was created and backed, paid for, armed, directed by the Nazis in the United States and the European Union. And Canada, because a lot of the oh, yeah. a lot of the banderas they went they left to Canada. Yep. To remind everybody also the Canadian, I think, Deputy Prime Minister. That's right, Christia Friedland, her grandfather was a Nazi collaborator, a Ukrainian Nazi collaborator. He escaped with the German Nazis to Germany and later to Canada. And Christia Freeland is a Nazi in the same vein. And she's very proud of her grandfather. Yeah, she's proud to be a Bandera. Yeah. That's the thing in this day and age. They don't try and hide it. For mm -hmm. a long, hide for it. A long they time. They, now. They, yeah, now they brag about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which that's, you know, the thrill of being evil is letting everybody know how evil you really are. And have the cat that guards the place. Yeah. I love cats. You got a cat there at home, mine, Patricia? Yeah, we had two, but one of them quit coming home. Maybe find food somewhere else. Well, you give food every day. Could be a neighbor's cat or something. Yeah, before tens of thousands of people, this right here was their last steps. <laughs> 